Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to InnoX Jogja. Hope you have a great day and a great lunch. And we are back for the second panel of the day. And today, when this is the second of panel, we will discuss about the interwine of future food and health, health and our environment with our moderator, the Adi Reza Nugraha, CEO and co-founder of MYCL Mycotech Lab with panels of Ali Pujiastuti, the Director of Learning and Growth of Amicom Business Park, ABP, and also Dr. Edi Jurnarsin, Business Development Head, Science Techno Park, Universitas Gajah Mada, Amaria Dila, Director of Ibisma Universitas Islam Indonesia, and Brian Koh, the Director of National University of Singapore NUS Enterprise. Adi, for this session, I'll give it pass to you. Okay. Um, thanks, Iki, for the introduction. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, welcome back to you know Jogja 2020 for the second um, session. And then um, this morning, um, I read the latest news about Jeff Bezos Climate Pledge Fund. They just announced first beneficiary who received 791 million US dollar. This is a part of um, 10 billion US dollar climate pledge or equal to 7% of Jeff Bezos wealth. This fund will help to, um, to fight climate change, the biggest threat. Um, I'm totally amazed with the amount of money flowing into the sector. And um, I wish this fund will accelerate innovation that is related to tackle climate change issue. So um, it is a good thing that um, good opportunity for us who wants to develop innovation in this area. So today we will have um, a talk about how to nurture innovation, particularly innovation that related to the food, health and environment. Um, I'm glad to be one of the today's moderator in Inno Jogja 2020. So as an introduction, I'm Adi, CEO and co-founder of um, MYCL. For you who are not familiar with MYCL, we formerly called Mycotech. So we develop sustainable biomaterial from mycelium, like products I'm wearing today, this watch, um, this wallet. Um, it's not leather, but it's better. Since we're using mushroom mycelium, we can save uh, water, land, and carbon emission. And today our production capacity is full until 2027 in order to supply demand from our clients over the world. Um, so innovation and sustainability is part of MICL DNA since um, day one. I'm still remember on my early days developing our startups. It is very struggle. Um, my co-founder and I having a huge dream to create business that has social and environment impact. However, we didn't know how to start it. So in 2012, um, startup is new word. Even unicorn startup is not yet exist. No accelerator, no incubator, even no investor interested in the sector. So our growth was very slow. We didn't know how um, to build our business, um, business model, pitch deck, financial um, terms. We don't have any idea about that. Um, so in 2020, it is totally different. Now ecosystem to nurturing startup is start to exist. Today, um, we have four speakers. Um, from startup ecosystem build rooms in universities. Um, so we will hear more details from them to get deep understanding on what are the crucial factors that should be prepared by incubator to support innovation and talents development as a way to unlock a better future of food, health, and environment. So we can start from um, Iweli. So Iweli, Director of Learning and Growth of Amicom Business Park. Um, I know you have two, two programs. First, uh, incubation programs, and the second one is um, uh, talent development. Can you share more about, um, about those programs to us? Okay, thank you, Adi, uh, for the time. I feel great to be here uh, in, in, in a part of you guys. So I will share about uh, the program that has developed by Amicom Business Park. I will uh, tell you in a 
two part. The first one is uh, the part of innovation culture. ABP has two program related to the issue of food environment and also the agriculture. The first program uh, is ABP has an incubation program that open twice a year as a trigger for students in the university to try to finish problem in their environment. ABB divided uh, into two stages of the innovation. The first stage is idea stage, and where the innovation still on the problem solving stage. So uh, ABB give knowledge to how the innovation become real and match with the problem. The second stage is the seed stage where innovation product already validated and has MVP to present. ABP encourage uh, yeah, the founders to continue their innovation. Like uh, second program for Amicom University has a program in the collaboration of lecture, student, research uh, collaboration to initiate innovation in many sectors, uh, not only health and food, but uh, yeah, in the common sectors. Every semester, the lecture will open the opportunity to the student to join the research. And uh, yeah. That is the part of the innovation for the talent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, about the talent, talent development. About the, yeah, about the talent development. Uh, you know, Amicom Business Park is a part of Amicom University. Amicom University has more than ten thousand active students. Amicom also uh, has a curriculum to yeah. Based on the IT skill, uh, we know that digital company mostly need an IT skill. The Amicom realized that issue about the gap between talent uh, industry needs and the curriculum uh, in the university. And then there are a lot improvement that Amicom do to decrease the gap. Yeah, that's what uh, ABP do. Okay, thanks Bailey for uh, your introduction and uh, share about the um, Amicom Business Park program. And then we can move to um, Ibu Dila. Uh, Ibu Maria Dila um, is, um, is a oops, okay, director of uh, Ibisma Universitas Islam Indonesia. Um, um, you, you say that um, Ibisma having a lot of programs like pre-incubation, incubation program, and post-incubation. Can you share more about us? Like how um, Ibisma UI is um, nurture innovation by um, through these three types of innovation. Oh, uh, Mas Andi. Hi, hello everyone. Well, Ibisma is an incubator in higher education institution that engages the nurturing innovation, especially in the startup field of technology. And yeah, we are uh, a university-based incubator since 2014. The number of incubators more than 60 startups. Uh, as one of the entrepreneurial growth hub, we are supported also by International Consortium and Erasmus Gita, Bring Indonesia Triangle Approach, and we are committed to build some business uh, ecosystem, such as the program in pre-incubation, incubation, and post-incubation. For the pre-incubation program, we have the seed funding from our university. We have the talent stage and then uh, innovation stage to develop the, our tenant. And we also have the program called UBIC, OEE Business in Innovation Challenge. So, uh, Tenant can be develop their uh, ideas and innovation on that program. And then for the incubation, uh, 
the startup or talent can learn about uh, how to grow your startup and then uh, giving the material about the startup mindset and about legal for startup, marketing strategy for startup, yeah, mentoring and coaching uh, for our startup. And also we are, uh, because we are the university based incubator, so we have the yeah, John streaming research using the incubation program. That's my study. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. So, um, startups, um, like um, support them about giving more knowledge about legal and how to start the business. That's, that's really yes. great. Um, because uh, I, I totally remember in early days, I don't have any idea about that. But now, um, now we we know how to uh, go and um, start asking um, how to start. So I can move to the um, next panelist, um, Brian Koh, director of NUS Enterprise. So um, Brian, I know you are quite active um, in um, nurturing innovation in in Southeast Asia region or even beyond than that. Um, can you tell us more how NUS Enterprise can um, um, nurturing innovation? And can you share about the latest program you already have right now? Sure, sure. Adi, thank you so much. And a uh, yeah, very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are enjoying your, uh, you know, this virtual uh, seminar. Uh, and, you know, that you take away uh, some knowledge because uh, given uh, unprecedented uh, times where we can't meet. But anyway, let me get down to a little bit of uh, an introduction. Uh, let me start by introducing uh, NUS Enterprise. NUS Enterprise is the entrepreneurial and innovation arm of the National University of Singapore. So in, in a sense, we uniquely pull all the uh, innovation and entrepreneurial activities together, uh, which shows that as a university, this is an important area. I think we are quite known for uh, very much uh, Block 71, which is the organizer and host of this event uh, in partnership with some of the others. But I think more than that, I want to also mention that, you know, um, uh, we have actually taken a shift in our focus uh, to the area called deep tech. Uh, some people ask the question, oh, what is deep tech, you know? So we have a simple definition. Deep tech is technology that is often not uh, replicable and often patentable. So that's something that we focus on uh, of late because in the past it's been, you know, uh, a lot of other things that we look at, but we see where the market is going. And definitely this is very much in line with the given topic this afternoon, the intertwine of uh, future of food, health and our environment. So that's a focus area that we have. And I want to also kind of talk a little bit about uh, Singapore. You know, um, we, we have land scarcity, no resources, but, uh, and therefore in the past, you know, uh, something like uh, agri, uh, agriculture would be <clears throat> almost unheard of for us to actually get ourselves into. But technology has changed this, and we believe so. As an institute of higher learning, this is one of the focus areas that we have sort of moved into. And um, urban farming has become a possibility that has created the, uh, uh, for us to overcome uh, lack of resources uh, or natural resources, as well as land scarcity. Uh, Singapore government announced, uh, if you have not heard, uh, the 30 by 30 goal uh, in uh, last year, 2019. And what is the 30-30 uh, goal? It is basically to produce 30% uh, of Singapore nutritional needs uh, locally by uh, 2030. Um, this is really uh, uh, expedited uh, the need of it given the COVID situation when it took us by storm in that sense. So really, you know, uh, uh, food, uh, health is really something that uh, we are giving a lot of focus on. Um, just to give everyone some idea in the area of um, uh, the future of food, three trends that we see, and I'm taking this from the Forward Fooding uh, 2020 report, 
uh, if you want to know some of the areas, and, and that's some of the areas that we are also looking into reinventing uh, proteins, uh, you know, from plant-based to insect alternatives. So we actually have startups in this space, sometimes often called alternative protein. Farming and big data, so minimizing risk and optimizing crop. So this is also something we're looking into, of which uh, urban farming, I say, would fall into. So how do we do, uh, you know, farming in, in a close environment? Uh, Singapore is known for our housing development board uh, in, in stacked up. Uh, so we want to do the same for our food as well. And then the third area is uh, waste reduction. Uh, upcycling of food, uh, managing of waste, uh, management technology, and uh, or, or sometimes often called a uh, circular economy. So these are the areas that we see as an important area to move into. And we certainly we're looking into startups and technology in this space itself. How is NUS uh, looking into this? We have a short-term and long-term approach. The short-term approach is very quickly to build up a pilot uh, agri-tech and aquatech center, which we are in the process of building right now, so that we can develop a community enable incubation and commercialization. Long-term wise, we want to consolidate all this into a building on campus and then integrate the R&D commercialization and incubation together. And with this, I just want to end off by saying at NUS, we see ourselves as developing the technology, working with partners, to scale up and to grow up, uh, this, to rather scale up and grow up technologies and production. We certainly want to look and work with uh, collaborators and partners. And, uh, and that's why our outreach to the ASEAN community uh, for collaborators, partners, and agency. Thank you. Awesome, Brian. Um, so yeah, despite of um, land use in Singapore is declining for farming, of obviously, but it's not stopping NUS to um, support innovation that related to agri-tech and, and sustainability and environment, which is really great. <clears throat> so, um, and move to the um, fourth speaker panelist, um, Pa Edi. Um, so Pa Edi is... Um, oh. Hi, Pa Edi. Um, head director of Hello. Hello. and incubation of uh, UGM. So, um, Paidi, um, can you introduce yourself and um, what is the incubation program of um, UGM, UGM doing right now? Um, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adi. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see you here. Thanks for having me again. Um, I'm Adi Janasen from UGM. Gajamada University, or called the uh, Universitas Gajamada in Indonesia. And, uh, um, so we have so many faculties, uh, to be precise, 18 faculties and two schools. And um, unfortunately, you know, in the past, we have yet to be able to you know, integrate all the potentials and, and uh, capabilities of the schools, the faculties. And there's something that uh, tried, to be, you know, tried to be improved by our previous rector, who is now uh, the Ministry of State Secretary, Dr. Pratik, no, Professor Pratik. So um, during his administration, we started having, you know, uh, not only conversations, but also uh, implementations into, you know, the uh, incubation program, or you can call it the uh, digital technology program, including that financial technology, and also uh, you know, food, health, and all or other streams uh, at the university life, especially because again, we have so many faculties that we were not able to really integrate in the past. So uh, my department, my, uh, we call it director, is the director of business development and incubation. So it's like the uh, coordinating body, coordinating agents of the university that manages business development, incubation, innovation, and, and, and so forth. So our first program was in like 2014, the first time we had an incubation program. So we called it uh, the Innovative Academy Program. Uh, this the incubation, one of, I think one of the trailblazers, we could say, or so to speak, like the, the, uh, the trailblazer of uh, this kind of program. 
sponsored by a university in Indonesia. But of course, now we have a lot. And obviously, now we have Bu Eli, Bu Amaria, and yeah, other, uh, other incubators in Indonesia. But uh, uh, back then, we didn't have uh, many role models. We didn't have you know, uh, sufficient evidence or, or instances um, that we could emulate. Yeah? Uh, apart from those outside Indonesia, of course, the NUS, or the European one, or the Silicon Valley, or something like that. But uh, uh, we, we started from uh, student priority, okay? so we prioritized uh, students at that time, uh, student startups, uh, alumni, but now, or nowadays, we, we have that wider, that wider spectrum of, of services. Uh, we also serve the like, academic research and innovations. So it's now wider. So to, to, to cut the story short, uh, after the incubation, we also, so we started having an accelerator as well. Accelerator. So we call it Gamma Innovasi Bibikari, GIB. So Gamma Innovasi Bibikari uh, purports to accelerate you know, the startup, startups, especially the graduates of the Innovative Academy program. But of course, not only do we accept the graduates of the Innovative Academy program, but also uh, the a wider community, maybe startups from other programs, other incubation programs that, that uh, uh, in our perspective, have potentials to be commercialized or to take off in the future. So that's about the incubation, acceleration. And also for the uh, academics, uh, we also built several companies under the university. So the university has a business arm named uh, GMUM, Gamma Multi Usaha Mandiri. That's the name of the company, the business arm of the, of the university. And under the GMUM, we have several companies, one of which is Swayasa. So Swayasa, Pete Swayasa, uh, specializing in, yeah, actually the teams of today, like food. So uh, Pete Swayasa has, you know, uh, was that business divisions in healthy food, we call it gamma food, and then health devices, has healthcare devices, and also the herbal medicines. So three major divisions of Betis Wise. So mostly this company with its business divisions serve the academics. As we know, you know uh, uh, yeah, UGM as a I think as the largest university and one of the oldest in Indonesia will have again so many researchers actually so many potentials but uh, in the past it, they ended up mostly with academic publications as you saw for again uh, academic ranks or uh, something like that so academic publications and then usually research and uh, inventions stop there but we think that this might not be yeah might not be sustainable in the future i mean we, we do nothing with the you know, research results research findings and of course, we try to improve and, and go further. So now we open the opportunity with that company to serve the uh, researchers. And we have, of course, we have several uh, mechanisms or schemes to serve the researchers or inventors. First one is through the license licensing uh, scheme. Uh, so we simply sell the, is that the, the uh, intellectual properties, the patents or something like that to um, yeah, to other companies or even to Pedis Wayasa and yeah, other related related firms in that field. So second uh, possibility is to immediately establish a startup. I think this this would be like a, a, an extended scheme, extended uh, you know effort right, uh, beyond the licensing. So licensing is the I think the most straightforward way of, of commercializing um, for the for those academic support for inventors, and then the, the startups. Uh, those startups finally will be spun off, of course, and some years, uh, for several years, uh, they will be under the incubation and acceleration, but down the road, they will be spun off and we are, uh, 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 yeah, the independent corporation. And we have some examples for that. Uh, but to end my, yeah, my, uh, my Switch day. I think we realize that um, the process is far from perfect. Results results are far from perfect, but uh, we know that we need we need anyway. We need to start and and improve all the time. And based on our experience, I think the key is the execution part. 
uh, we might have a lot of you know, good planning or yeah, good even good process, uh, good planning, good process, good mentoring and everything. But at the end of the day, I think the execution part is, is the key, uh, the gold standard, I think, in this, in our realm. So again, uh, yeah, we are still learning, especially, especially how to execute or implement things properly and, and fast. Thank you, Adi. Thanks, Adi, uh, for your introduction um, and then um, program within uh, UGM Incubation uh, and Head Director of Business Development. So um, now we are open for having a question from the audience. So if you have any question, please, um, you can um, put your question on the platform. If you watch from um, Jub Jubilee platform, please, there's a section, um, Q&A section there. You can write your question there. And if you are accessing um, from the other platform, you can go into the pigeon hole um, and then the pigeon hole AT and the password is enox one i n n o x one. Um, so yeah, um, while we're waiting for the question from the audience, um, uh, I have a question for um, Ibu Dila. So um, you mentioned also you have a downstreaming research using incubation program. Um, can you tell us more? How does it work? You also um, um, try to connect the innovation or research uh, to commercialist by using incubation, or how does it work? Yes, because, yes thank you. Uh, because uh, we are the university based incubator and uh, we are. Islam University of Indonesia or Universitas Islam Indonesia, we are the first private university. We have the three faculties. So we have uh, many inventions from the subject. So uh, that's the why we have the in innovation. We have the a uh, lot of our main invention. So uh, we, are, we, we, we can be uh, help between the uh, inventor and also for the staff and also for the industry. So that's the point. And we make the connection with the Pentahelix, such as the, yeah, from the researchers and then from the uh, business and then for the uh, government, also the media and industry. That's my side. Um, and then uh, to Bu Ali, um, so so what is the challenge um, to support talent innovation development within um, AMICOM? Okay. Yeah, uh, there's, uh, there are challenges actually that ABP face, uh, but I will just mention maybe two. Uh, in the talent development, uh, Actually, the problem is about the providing talent to the industry need. So, uh, where there is uh, a lot of raw talent from university, uh, mostly the best one has been taken by the company uh, that needs. And then the, the rest is still uh, uh, not really have a good skill. Then. The incubator, I think, supposed to take a role here, like providing places to develop talent uh, based on the company yet, I think. Mm, get it. So um, the main challenge is um, for the talent development is how to make a student readiness to be accepted by the industry. And that's yes. the role for the um, Amicom business part to help them. Um, yes. to, yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, so for um, Brian, um, you, men you also mentioned about the latest NUS program that um, having new facility for the IV tech soup. Um, uh, is it open for, for the public now or how does it work 
Mm. Okay. Um, at the moment, the uh, centre is being uh, renovated. Uh, we hope to have it ready by the middle of next year. Um, however, uh, our priority, of course, will be given to uh, our NUS community first. Now, I want to kind of add on a little bit to what Eddie mentioned uh, earlier. And, and, you know, I share the same uh, struggle or we share the same struggle uh, because uh, yeah. a lot of uh, researchers and professors uh, invent a lot of things, but they don't commercialize it. So uh, I think this is quite common across all uh, universities and, uh, you know, uh, the justification for research has to go beyond just uh, publishing journals. Uh, I'm sure all of us uh, face that same uh, problem. In NUS, uh, uh, we, we have actually the same problem. And uh, two years ago, um, uh, our Deputy President of uh, Innovation and Enterprise uh, created a new program called GRIP, G-R-I-P, yeah? uh, Graduate Research Innovation Program. Uh, and what this program is, it's a little bit of an accelerator and incubator program where we almost force uh, researchers and postdocs to push their technology to commercialize because that's where the, the, the you know, the technology is. Uh, it's very, it was not easy. So like Eddie, you mentioned that, you know, uh, it's actually in the execution. So of course, when we first started out, it was very difficult. But I think we've done almost three or almost four runs now, and uh, we do see the, the results. And we have to push for, you know, to, to, to get it done um, because uh, it's not easy. I, I would say, you know, you really have to persuade, uh, be persistent, you know, persevere and all these. Um, but we've seen, so we've actually produced more than 60 startup companies in the deep tech space and quite a number in the... Um, uh, agri-tech, the aqua-tech and food-tech space, and together with the medical uh, space itself. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, th the journey is not over yet. I think we are still, you know, need to see many more things happening. Uh, but we continue to pursue this. I think one of the good things is the university also took a risk to uh, uh, be, you know, involved in this uh, all the way up to the president and the provost. So they actually put in, uh, you know, funding also for our uh, these startups that are formed. Now, coming back to your question, Adi, on this is about the usage. The reason why we're not opening up to the public at the at this point of time is we have built up some startups, and it's really a pressing need for us to allow our first startups to come in. But I actually we are open to talk to uh, potential startups who can then be the next line of, uh, you know, uh, discussion that we want to have for these companies to come into our uh, agri-tech center, aqua-tech center as well. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the um, common problem is from research or idea to commercial stage. And then now we have university that is um, bridging the gap um, to bring it or accelerate it the process and took the risk. So that's the highlight, which, um, which is really good for uh, innovators or startup founders um, that uh, have, have no idea how to start. Um, so um, thanks very much for the sharing. And um, for Pa Edi, um, do, you, do you face similar problem um, or challenge? challenge? on supporting talent and innovation development within uh, UGM um, community? I think pretty much similar, similar. <laughs> so, uh, but of course there are specific things, there are unique things uh, that differ at the university. And for example, in our case, uh, I mean, I, I'm quite objective here, although I'm teaching at the business school, okay, but uh, I will be quite objective because I'm also teaching somewhere else in Korea, in Germany, everywhere. I could say that uh, UGM has enormous talents, okay? We don't have any problem with talents, but we are lacking in the process. <laughs> so process is not that good, I mean, to be honest. Like, we have, have, I would say that one of the best talents in Indonesia are at UGM. Even I would say better than our competitors in Indonesia. Yeah, in general, like in general. <laughs> But again, the process uh, is far from 
we are far from being good. Even good, we don't say great. Even being good, so still far from it. So, I think the uh, the, the the main challenge is how we improve things academically, of course, yeah, academically, and also uh, with respect to and acceleration. So, like uh, uh, the mentoring process, and also the link, like what you say, a link and match to the industry. And also the uh, uh, relevant progress uh, to the new development in, in, in the field. For example, when we talk about uh, like big data, artificial intelligence, it has been there for two decades and we did nothing. That's something we, uh, to, be, to be harsh, I could say a disgrace, a disgrace to knowledge. We, we, have, we had not done anything for the last two decades. Suddenly now we are surprised with like, artificial data and something like that. So not something new, but we didn't do enough in the past. So we uh by self-critic and also yeah uh self yeah something that we have to improve for in the future. But talents, we don't have problem with talents, we have problem with, with uh process and execution of course. Sharing as well about the uh, faculty members, the academics the challenge is even bigger because now uh, the uh, a typical uh, conventional system or wisdom right, in the academic world would be to pursue publications. And usually, you know, when you have enough publication, you have um, teaching assignments, you have research grants, and you don't have any lack. That's the problem, right? If you don't have, you don't have any, you know, uh, motivation, you don't have any how to say yeah, uh, any eagerness to pursue further, then it's not that easy right, to pursue those kind of people. You understand what I'm saying? Right? So if we have we have some students, they they don't have any experiences, they don't they don't look at the future because they don't know what it is. It's very easy to direct them. You know? Oh, I, I, I can direct you, okay. Now you do this, okay. Uh, if you are successful, if you can take off, you will be rich. And the university will get some reputation. We're happy together. That's very easy, right? But if you are dealing with faculty members, remember, faculty members are, are rich. <laughs> they have plenty of money from their salaries. They have research grants. They have everything. So when we, when we tell them, uh, you know, your inventions, yeah, your inventions will be at loss if you stop here. Uh, it will not benefit anyone. So let's go further. And you say, where should I? Where should I? And I'm a professor. I'm famous. Maybe I'm maybe Nobel Prize laureate candidate also. Uh, so why should I, yeah, I, I don't need money. I don't need reputation. I have been there. So it would be more difficult. I, th I think that's the challenge uh, if we talk about the, the faculty members or academics in general. So yeah, so of course, challenge, similar, similar challenges, but, uh, maybe some unique experiences, but yeah, similar in the pattern. See, uh, I see, uh, so there's a different drive between the academics and the industry yeah, sure. and the startup. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which I all <laughs> I always face when I'm um, having a collaboration with the uni or um, research institution. They have different um, goal settings in their career. Mm -hmm. um, so we get a lot of questions from the participants or the audience. Um, so, okay. We have one. Um, what programs do you offer um, for the public to work with your universities? Um, I'm working on a food tech idea. Did, okay, we can start from, um, um, I think it's not only for food tech, but in general, maybe, um, and particularly for the food health and environment um, industry or sector. So maybe we can start from um, Ibu Dila, um, do you have programs that are available to be accessed by public? Yes, thanks, Adi. Well, we have a program for yes, funding and also from incubation program called uh, UBIC, UEE Business and Innovation Challenge. It's not only for internal students, but also from the external. So yeah, such as uh, I just said about, yeah, in the two, three years ago, maybe for the e especially only for the student from 
UII, but right now we open for yeah for public, so you can access their yeah seed funding uh, in January January 2021. We will open the program uh, UBIC. So that's one year program for incubation program. Start from yeah how to start your business, how to grow your business until the uh, mentoring and coaching about yeah, the legal or might be access to the laboratorium and technical aspects in our university. Oh, cool. So um, if you so for the audience, if you are interested with the program, so please Google uh, UEE Business Innovation Challenge. Right? So it will open yeah. on January next year. Okay. Yes, on January next year. Oh, and then moving to Bu Ali, um, do, you, do you offer um, um, or have any um, program that publicly access um, for the audience? Okay, uh, the program that maybe can be collaborated between ABP with the uh, startup like Food Tech. Uh, yeah, ABP has a lot of events that we have a spirit for the collaboration in the event, maybe uh, you as a maybe founder of the startup can like uh, share uh, and a bit soft selling with the uh, audience that we have. Uh, Abebe has a basis uh, community um, on the IT. So I think that is the collaboration that may be uh, can be collaborated and the second one is uh, startup clinic and uh, Pepe has a program that it's look like a clinic for the uh, sick person or something yeah. but it's not uh, it's for the startup who want to uh, get mentoring uh, and then they they confuse they have an idea but they don't have a team and I will help with the Sarah Clinic program. Yeah, for um, Brian, maybe you, you have um, something from NUS Enterprise. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing I would say about if anyone who wants to access uh, NUS, the best way to access is through our Block 71. And that's the reason why we have many Block 71s uh, located. Uh, you know, uh, we have three in Indonesia, uh, Jakarta, Jogja, and as well as Bandung. And then, of course, some of the others we just opened up in Vietnam. We're looking, we also have something set up in China as well as the US. And of course, the HQ is in Singapore. So, you know, the community is there. And I think that's what we are looking. So for public front facing, you know, get in touch with us through the uh, Block 71 website. We have an inquiry, uh, uh, you know, uh, place where you can actually write in to us, get connected with our community. Uh, there's no lack of uh, events and activities and programs within uh, NUS and the Block 71 space itself. If I were to name it, it's just too many. In fact, I don't think I can even uh, keep in touch and uh, update it with all the many programs. But once you're in the system, I think uh, there are many opportunities of how you can interact with uh, specific groups. So let's say, for example, if you talk about food, yeah, I think you likely will be connected. And uh, I also am growing the food community. So I, I oversee a community that's here in Singapore. And definitely, you can be connected into this space itself. Uh, it depends on where you are in your journey, because if you're very new, of course, then it takes a little different uh, approach. But if you're a little bit more senior, then of course, there are also different programs as well. But I would say this is how uh, I would say we have the programs that are available. We are also going to launch new programs coming up uh, next year. So at that right time, we will announce it. And uh, some of these can be open to anyone who's also interested. Uh, yeah, you, you know, so I can only say that um, uh, we talk about the, the term ecosystem. That's very important. You must get yourself plugged into a proper startup ecosystem that can then help and push you because the journey ahead for a startup is not easy. But I would say it's a very rewarding uh, a journey itself. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, for everyone interested with the NUS um, enterprise, 
you can start from block 71. Me personally, I also part of the block 71 community. So um, it is very, um, yeah, I'm glad for being a the community because we got a lot of information from that. And then um, the community is also supporting each other. So it is a good start for you who are interested to know more about the NDS enterprise and um, uh, the community that can help us grow our business. And then, yeah, for PAEDI, um, we also have uh, some program that is publicly accessed um, in UGM for, yeah, within UGM. Right, I think um, in our case, the Innovative Academy program would be, I think the, the door to, yeah, cooperation or uh, participation by, by the public, okay? not only uh, the UGM students and academics, but also to everyone, pretty much everyone for now. Uh, so Innovative Academy program, and then afterward we have the, again, the GIB, Gamma Innovasi Budikari, and the whole ecosystem, whole ecosystem is uh, uh, managed by the UGM Science Techno Park. A UGM STP. I mean, that's the, the, the whole ecosystem. So we call it the uh, Science Techno Park, UGM STP. But uh, uh, the, I think that the door to, again, the uh, cooperation, or if you want to join um, our incubation program or something like that, I think the first, the first part would be at the, the Innovative Academy program. And the Innovative Academy program also has a cross cooperation with the Block 71. We held some events together uh, and we held some events also at the Block 71. So I think that's good for, for the community, for students and everyone in the city and also in the country. Cool. Oh, awesome. So, um, yeah, we got also another question. Um, from the participant. Um, okay, so this is from Ali. Um, how can people from outside Indonesia can access Indonesia farmers community? Any government or platform you would recommend to? So perhaps it, it is a question from um, Pak Edi or Budila or Bu Eli. Um, do you have any idea how people outside Indonesia can access farmers? What kind of access do you mean? I mean, data or association or anything? Because uh, it depends on uh, what you're after. I think data data would be, I think, collected by the Ministry of Agriculture or the uh, Central Bureau of Statistics or something like that. <laughs> That's about the data. But we talk about association, then, uh, there are some, yeah, there are farmers association, like Himpunan something, Himpunan Tani, Rukun Tani or something, right? So uh, I think that's the, the most official way of accessing or having access to the farmers. I mean, other than that, uh, maybe you can contact some uh, yeah. specialized programs or specialized universities. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe, I think. Do you also have um, a tenant um, that focus on the agriculture or aquaculture? Um, yeah, some of our tenants are focused mm -hmm. on agriculture, um, animal husbandry or something like that. Yeah, yeah yes. I think that's yes. maybe another channel for um, yeah, could be. Indonesia can work mm -hmm. with um, Indonesian startup that focus on the agri tech. Sure. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if you're interested, please, um, you can um, reach out to all the panelists who are um, having tenant from various um, cities um, and region. Um, cool. And then we have another question for um, um, Ray. So for, for all panelists, what is the future that you seek in the future of food, health, and environment um, for, for the innovation and the startups that in your incubator. Okay, so what do you seek for the future for food, health, and environment for the innovation? Um, perhaps uh, we can start from 
Ibu Dila. Well, maybe for the future of food health become the most reason essential issues to be solved of all parties. Then the startup uh, who can take part uh, to solve the issue will get a great possibility on market share in the future. And then for the environment, there will be a moving concern about the environmentally based development. So is it become a concern <laughs> uh, Ibisma for um, seek startup that focus on this area? Yes, we have, uh, yeah, because uh, as I thought before, uh, we are the university, have the more attention about the more subject from the experts. So yes, we have uh, resource for environment and then about uh, the medical, yeah, medicine access and technological uh, chemical engineering, uh, uh, technical or technological development. It's interesting. Um, so for Ryan, um, yes, and yes, is um, um, heavily invest in, in searching or nurture innovation in this area. How, how about you? One of the things I see and uh, the university also sees in this whole space itself is uh, in the area of food and medical environment is this whole space of the convergence of different technology. I think in the past, we've always looked at technology in its own vertical, in its own silo. So when you talk about science, it's just science. You know, When you talk about um, IT, it's just IT. But today, I think uh, we're going to see a convergence of different um, fields and technologies coming together. Let me give you an example that we have uh, over here in, in Singapore and in NUS. We have a company, uh, the, the, the company is How Food, okay, H O O W, Food. Um, they brought a very interesting technology together. Uh, they have a food scientist who looks at ingredients. They also have a person who came from the biomedical side of things, and uh, then they have an IT person also. Now, what they do is they converge everything together and they form an AI engine to be able to look at ingredients and be able to also see the output of that ingredients. So let's say, for example, if I want ice cream, I love to eat ice cream. I don't want to change the taste of ice cream, but ice cream has high calories. You know, uh, uh, how can I create uh, ice cream with uh, uh, low calories in that sense? And that's what the engine has done. And actually, they piloted this out and they've actually uh, created an ice cream that is of low calories. So a whole tub, uh, and they've got actually gone commercial in this. So one tub of uh, uh, one liter ice cream is about the same calories as a hamburger, which is actually not bad. <laughs> and they are moving on to other things. So the point of bringing this up is uh, to answer the question, uh, where is the food, uh, the future of this area is going to be? It is the convergence of the different technologies coming together. We're going to see the use of uh, knowledge in a different sense. And that's the reason why, as I mentioned earlier, technology will change things. Um, Singapore, as I mentioned, we never thought that, you know, uh, agri-tech can be something that we do because agriculture, no one would have thought about it uh, 20, 30 years ago because land is, uh, you know, uh, scarce in a sense. But today we can actually do uh, uh, urban farming and we are able to produce. And I believe in the near future, we will be able to produce uh, a sufficient stock, not that we, we, we won't uh, do import, but I think it will be a balance in that sense. Yeah, so <clears throat> to, to summarize, I see that whole, uh, the future of food is actually very interesting. Uh, I, I, I think there's much more to talk about because waste is also another thing. We, we, and I, I just want to mention this, we have a company that's uh, doing the extraction technology. So it's a professor who, who has invented a way of doing extraction and he used spent barley to make um, uh, uh, Korean noodles or noodles for you know Japanese and all these, uh, Saba noodles and all these. So 
uh, yeah, you know, and it's actually from waste material. So, you know, the circular economy and all this. So I think it's a very exciting space and I, I encourage those who are interested, uh, keep searching, look for the right uh, space. And, you know, uh, there are lots of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Brian. I'm I'm looking forward for the uh, uh, guilty free <laughs> ice cream <laughs> innovation. Um, and yeah, uh, for uh, the good thing about incubating such companies is yeah. uh, in the fridge we always have tons of uh, uh, ice cream available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's the good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, for. Um, um, really, really. I, I know you, you um, uh, Amicom is focused on the IT, but do you see um, also opportunity for um, um, to nurture in innovation within this area? Okay, uh, I totally agree with the uh, explanation uh, from Brian. That's also what it's in my mind uh, that both health and environment is on uh, the sex sectors that's really uh, connected uh, but maybe the future that I will add is about the fulfillment of the food itself I mean the human needs uh, now uh, try to think that if there is a technology to uh, cultivating uh, like uh, something in the home and I have a farming field <laughs> But yeah, we call it uh, urban farming, but in the MVP also have a startup, we call it uh, Simon Corley, that's in tomorrow on the innovation stage, they will uh, share about the hydroponic um, farming technology to monitoring the plants. And yeah, I think uh, the thing is how to encourage people to have their own produce um, put to their needs. Mm. Got it, got it. So um, Amicom, Abit Amicom um, also have a, some tenant working on the urban farming and then um, that yeah. promoting our food and environment as well. So that's a huge opportunity for that even on the IT side. Um, and uh, for uh, Eddie, um, do, do you see the opportunity for, for this sector? Um, and mm -hmm. what is your um, future seeking for this industry? Mm -hmm. I think I concur with all the speakers here uh, that the food and health, food, health and environment are uh, you know, very prospective now and in the future of course and um, i'm not saying that the COVID 19 pandemic is a good thing but actually this pandemic uh shed some light you know into you know the uh, uh, the necessity and also the prospect of this industry right, to, uh, especially for the future now and in the future for example you know uh, now universities and also uh, pharmaceutical firms and the health industry in general and health and food industries, uh, we are competing to come up with you know, proper medicines, uh, better food, uh, better quality, better quantity and everything. Uh, and of course, in the future, this will be more because we know that the challenges will be even more in the future. And if you see the... Um, demographic no demographic aspect of Indonesia for example we have so many people 260 million plus and the average age of living Indonesians right now is 28 that's why we call it a demographic bonus because it's young <laughs> the average age is 28 and life expectancy is getting higher so we know that uh, the demand for you no know, better health better food better environment will be more intense you can imagine right? they are young and life expectancy is increasing so you can imagine how uh, how prospective these three industries are to especially in the context of indonesia so uh, uh, in, in in our uh, incubation and also in the ecosystem 
that we call uh, UGM Science Sigma Park, uh, we always remain, remind the uh, tenants and so all potential startups that will join mm -hmm. that not only is this industry uh, you know, helping so many people, but with respect to monetary benefits, these industries are really enormous and potential. So this is something I quite quite encouraging, like right? quite encouraging for everyone. Uh, it's helping, of course, it benefits everyone. Like what Brian described, you know, we we have a better better version of ice cream. You know? <laughs> so we are happy together. So it helps a lot of people. It benefits everyone. But also remember that the uh, monetary benefits, like the rewards, are also high. So it's not something like oh, I'm doing something for free, or I'm doing no. Uh, this is uh, uh, this purpose will help people only, but remember the reward is also big. So again, I agree with all the speakers here that the industry, these industries are really uh, yeah, super potential. Super potential. Okay, thanks, Baidi. Um, so yeah, I think we are going to um, to the end of this session. Um, so yeah, today we heard um, from four startup ecosystem builders in universities talking about their effort to cultivate innovation and talent development for the next decade. So if you have a good idea or businesses that can create impact to social and environment, I think now is a really good moment. Um, we have many options to start. If you are interested to hear more about their program, um, some of them are having a um, specific session uh, for tomorrow. So please um, stay tuned for the um, Inno Jogja 2020. Um, and then as a closing, there's a new planet B. We need more innovation to combating climate change. I can wait to live where we can achieve healthy living and then um, with carbon neutral lifestyle. So thanks for the four speakers or panelists for, um, for the sharing today. Uh, I'm Adi, CEO and co-founder of uh, MYCL. So stop talking, start making. Um, thank you everyone. So I will get back to the um, MC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.